Well, Governor Patterson yesterday announced the doubling of the projected budget deficit for next year just since his last emergency budget address in July, the result of the financial system crisis, obviously. He's now projecting an unprecedented $47 billion deficit compared to projected revenues over the next three years. And all of this is happening just as Patterson has lost his closest advisor, Charles O'Byrne may not have uh, been a household name in the uh, state of New York before resigning under pressure last week, but he was so close to Patterson that a New York Magazine article three weeks ago, before O'Byrne's problems came to light, said, for all intents and purposes, Charles is the governor, a quote from an unnamed Democratic Party operative. The writer of that article joins us now. He is Jeffrey Gray, New York Magazine contributor. Hi, Jeffrey. Welcome to WNYC. Hey, good morning. And the governor dumped this burn resignation on the public, as politicians are wont to do, on Friday afternoon to lose it in the weekend news cycle. So for people who have no idea what we're talking about, what happened last week to Charles O'Byrne? And for that matter, who is Charles O'Byrne? Um, you know, Charles O'Byrne is kind of one of the most unique um, characters in the Albany drama, a drama that was always kind of been very boring and known for um, nobody really knew what it was known for because no one really knew what happened there. Um, but he, uh, his arc, his career arc is so unorthodox. He started off as a Jesuit priest. Well, he started off first as a lawyer uh, coming out of Columbia, and then he went into the Jesuits, and he was a very um, moral-based person. And uh, when he became disillusioned with the Jesuits, he entered politics, and he worked for Howard Dean. And it's kind of unclear, actually, what he did for Howard Dean. You know, the, the, all the news reports said he was a speechwriter, but that's kind of been now been, confirmed, uh, been debunked. So it's a little bit of a mystery as to what he did there. Now, after he uh, got uh, done with Howard Dean, he was looking for a job, and he was out of work, and Patterson was looking for somebody. And he went to Ethan Ghetto, who's a, a Democratic uh, you know, activist and who's Howard Dean's uh, New York campaign manager, and he said, do you have anything? And uh, Patterson also was talking to Ethan Ghetto. He said, well, I actually have this guy, and now listen – you know, he doesn't have the, the traditional resume, but he's actually a brilliant guy, and I think you like him. They met, and they got on. How long ago? So that would just be a few years ago? It was about four years ago. Oh, I'm surprised to hear that it was that recent. I get the impression from this coverage in, in the papers the last few days about, oh, he was so close and so personally close, like they went to college together or something. Right. Well, actually, they did share an alma mater, and, like, these guys have, like, you know, the most you know, different backgrounds. David grew up the son of a of, of, of Harlem senator, and O'Byrne grew up in New Jersey um, in, a, in a very kind of Catholic family. But they had these kind of like these very interesting traits that, that kind of make them, in my opinion, like very close. I mean, they're both outsiders. They're both um, – they both went to Columbia, and they're both intellectuals. They love – the three-dimensional chess game, and they like talking about it in the abstract. So this quote in your article about O'Byrne being the governor for all intents and purposes, it was just an unnamed Democratic operative. Does he speak for many in Albany, though? Uh, yes. You know, Everyone who's dealt with Charles O'Byrne, um, if you put, put it simply, like if you want to get to the governor, you have to go through O'Byrne. One allegation that uh, you know I, I heard uh, recently is that uh, Charlie Rangel, dean of the Congress, wanted to get David Patterson on the phone. And he called David Patterson, and he got a call back from Charles O'Byrne. And he's like, who, who is this? You know, who is this? I, you know, I've known this guy uh, my whole life. So everything went through O'Byrne, and that's the way he ran his inner circle. And for the most part, in the early months of uh, David's uh, governorship, it was wildly effective for David. He's had notoriously uh, known to have organizational problems in his staff, um, you know, legendary in Albany of not being able to fire anybody and keeping people on that have kind of misguided him or he hasn't shown up to the places on time. Um, but something in, in the glue was working with O'Byrne, I think. He was, among other things, the organizer-in-chief? The organizer-in-chief, the bad cop-in-chief, the disciplinarian-in-chief, and the priest-in-chief. But David Patterson fired him or pressured him to resign. Why? Um, you know, I think there's a couple things for D for David, uh, for what his people tell me, is that the news was just too bad. It was just too ugly a story, and it was a week for O'Byrne that actually kept on getting worse. In a lot of ways, in my opinion, o O'Byrne made the story worse. About It's about back taxes at its root, right? Right. Uh, you know, according to the uh, what, what O'Byrne disclosed himself is that he had failed to pay taxes for about five years and uh, to the tune initially of 200000 And as the week progressed, he kept on opening himself up to, to more disclosures, I think, in, in a— um, in the spirit of transparency, 
And uh, unfortunately, like, that didn't really work because what happened was it turned out that he was off about the numbers. And um, his lawyers, you know, claimed that he had suffered from non-filer dis- d- syndrome. And it was now, he old- did suffer from clinical depression, it came out. But he said that, and I, that became such a source of derision over over the last week, that there was an actual psychological condition called non-filer syndrome. It's like the Twinkie defense. <laughs> But it didn't really exist, according to anybody who knows anything. Right, and it didn't. You, even if it did exist, it was comical, and it, and it made uh, it made Patterson look bad. You know, if this is the guy he's trusting. Um, you know, how could how could somebody uh, run the state and at the same time fail to pay the most like elemental function of, of being a citizen? So now what? Um, so now it's 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 high drama again in David Patterson's world, as it always is. You know, he's in this position that he never thought he would be in, that he never asked for. That he, ne- you know, that he arguably would never have run for because he just doesn't have the tools to, you know, I- at least until now, he did not have the. He was a legislator. He was not an administrator, um, and now he's facing an unprecedented forty-seven billion debt. You know, hmm, he's a just- legislator, not an administrator, running for the top job. We have a few others of those <laughs> right now. Did you notice? <laughs>